Hello and welcome to Lightworks. In this tutorial we're going to have a look at rendering effects, what exactly that means and at what points you need to render. So what is rendering? Well rendering means mixing down your effects layers into a single file. So when do you need to render? Well there's a couple of scenarios where rendering is going to be important. All Lightworks effects are real time, apart from third party plugins. And those real time effects are processed using your graphics card GPU. At some point, if you've got complicated effects stacks, your GPU is not going to be able to process in time what's required of it in real time as you play back. The render function in Lightworks is a pro-only feature. If you're a free user, you will not be able to render your effects. So do upgrade to enjoy the added freedom this will give you when you're working with multi-effects layers. Today, I'm just working on my laptop system. It's got a reasonably powerful GPU, but all my video is coming off a single SSD drive. The shots I'm using today are all HD 1080p. On the timeline I've got a couple of sections of video. The first five seconds here is a graphic that I've built up and it's got multiple effects filters on it. Let's have a look what's in the stack. I right click, go to my effects settings. This is the effects stack on this clip. Let's turn everything off and see what we've got. My first layer it's just the shot of the snowboarder. On top of that, I've used an image keyer to blend in this graphic that has an alpha channel. It's blending the two layers together with a specific type of blend mode. On top of that layer, I put a vignette in to knock out the edges with a gradient. I've also used a DVE to resize the image and reposition it. I've added color correction to the background. And on top of all of that, I've used a third party Boris FX filter to add some optical light rays cutting through the composition. Now as I scrub through the timeline we will get single frame updates. But if I go back to the top and attempt to play this it's just far too resource intensive for the GPU. Just get a few frame updates as we go along. So we need to deal with that using the systems render function. To open the render panel Press your Timeline Advance button and you'll find Render just there. Here's the Render Panel. We've got a few choices in the Render Panel to set up to help us optimize the processing. You've got the source of the render provided by the tracks on your edit. I can render the current effect, all effects on a variety of tracks available, or if I mark and park a section we get an additional option called Mark Section. Next is the Lightworks Media Space destination, or where the render files are actually going to be placed on your system. You can leave that at Auto to go to the media space with the most available space, or you can specifically choose a media space. I've only got one media space configured in Lightworks. It's on my system drive, the SSD. You can choose the format of the rendering, frame size and video standard, and finally you can choose the file type container you'd like to use for the render file creation and finally the compression the actual codec that's contained inside the file type I'm going to be doing all my rendering using the Avid DNX codec this is a high quality codec and will give you great picture results if you want to work with Avid DNX files and rendering you need to purchase a license from the Lightworks shop this is a permanent license and is not time limited well, first of all Let's just simply render the current effect underneath the playhead. 1080p MXF Avid Codec. Hit Start. The background task starts. And you can check the render progress by clicking on the thumbnail from the task list. Now let's check out the playback. That's much better. If you render an effect using the current effect method and you decide you need to change something, you can undo a rendered section simply by right clicking on it and choosing reconfigure. If I reconfigure all of this, I return to the piece that we just had and I can make a change. I'm going to go into my blend mode layer, just reduce the value of the foreground opacity just to fractionally brighten up the image as a whole. Now I can go back and just hit render again. Of course rendering is a background task. Why not take full advantage of this and carry on working while the render is progressing? If we just jump over to the other section of the edit, we can make some changes. 
retinting, for instance, on picture and picture number two up there. Picture number four. And number five there. That's the beauty of the background task render engine. You never held up working with Lightworks. We could open up some more clips, changes. make some changes while we're viewing material. And I'm informed when the render's complete. The render files in the project are displayed in the content manager. Simply go to the clips filter, then to the render tab. Here we can see the rendered media on the two occasions we've rendered so far. Let's take a look at this multi-track section here, section 2. Now here we've got a different situation going on. Each one of these nine picture-in-pictures is 1080p HD. That's all these shots here in the bin. Nine different HD files requiring to be played at the same time. On each file I put a colour tint layer as well and a DVE resizes them. You can see all the effects tabs here for those nine frames. On the top layer I've got the final picture in picture and a graphic that is blended with another blend mode and has some motion keyframes to resize. I'm going to go full screen just hit F12 for your full screen. If I hit play we can see how the system is struggling with this replay in real time with all these layers. Let's open the render panel once more. This time we're going to do a different type of render. Instead of just rendering the whole lot, what I want to render is all the layers apart from V1. So from video 2 to video 9. Everything below video 2 I want to render. And I want to leave video 1 and the effects that are available there that's the title and the blend mode. I want to leave them alone for the moment in case I want to make some changes and see that in real time. To render everything apart from video 1 I'm going to do the following. Choose the source and choose all effects on video 2. All the other settings remain the same. Press start. And that's complete. And here you can see we now got a brackets rendered, appended to the video 2 title. Let's now try playing back. Remember, only video 1 is now playing real time processing of the effects that are on it. That's much better. Now, if I wanted to, I could go in and change the title. Modify the blend mode opacity and the system would still be able to play back my changes. I'm just going to undo that by right clicking with the reconfigure. Now you can actually render specific ranges in your timeline with a mark and park. If I go back to the cut point there, the beginning of our second section, add an in point, step to the next cut, which is the end, we mark this range, bring up the render panel once more, go to the source, you now can see mark section. Let's render the mark section from V1 downwards. So once you've done all your rendering and you're happy with the edit, you've got your playback so you can review things correctly, you want a quick way of returning the edit to its original components for export and delivery. We don't want to leave this rendered media on the timeline when we export because printing the files out again jumps yet another generation in encoding and the more you encode, the more generations you go through, your quality will lower. So we want to trace the clips back to its original sources. And to do that, you need to use the Make Trace function. Just right click on your timeline, or your edit monitor, or use the Edit Settings menu on the COGS icon. I'm just going to right click, choose Make, a traced edit. Now we haven't got any subclips and syncs on the timeline, so I'm just going to use my rendered clips, trace back through this media to the original source clips. Press Do It. And what we get in the bin is our edit name appended with the word trace. We just open that to a viewer and we check its timeline. You can see we're back to the original source clips and the rendered sections have disappeared. Now we're ready to export it 
at the primary generation of the media. And finally, let's have a look at a few technical points you should be aware of when you're working with a render function. If I mark and park this range that traverses two clips and perform a mark section render, that's fine. But if I want to make some changes and I right click, it's not possible to reconfigure this render range. The only way to return to how it was is to use the undo. But if you've carried out lots of other editing on your sequence, you may have run out of undo steps, in which case you may need to return to a milestone version of the edit, or perhaps consider making a copy of the edit with a make copy function on the edit viewer frame as a backup prior to doing that sort of render range. Now throughout the tutorial we've been rendering segments and reconfiguring different areas of the timeline then re-rendering after making adjustments. So if we go to our clips rendered filter in the content manager we've started to build up quite a few render files. Now it's recommended that you don't even think about trying to delete any of these until the project safely completed and out of the system and even further archived in its completed state. If you want to identify which files these render sections refer to in your content manager, you can use the pop out original function. And the keyboard shortcut is N. If I press this button or press N on the keyboard, my content manager switches to the recent current media display. Let's talk about deleting the render files themselves. In this view, you might just say, well, I'm going to destroy this render file. Right click on the clip itself and hit destroy. Well, let's go with that. You're going to completely destroy the clip. And what's going to happen is actually we're going to delete the rendered media file, but we're also going to delete the Lightworks shot log. That's the file in your project that refers to this clip and then points to the associated media file on your system. The shot log contains such information as this name we can see on the segment on the timeline. But let's go ahead and delete in this method. Hit delete. Go to our shot. Well, we've lost the name. We've no idea about the log. The log's gone. The media file's certainly gone because it's displaying us offline. But what if we want to go back to the original source clips and do some more effects work? If you right click on there, you can no longer reconfigure. The only way out of this is to use undo. And if you'd already done a load more editing, you wouldn't even be able to step back that far. So you've got a real problem. Undoing that would step back to the effects on the raw source clip. Let's just redo that. Step back to our broken segment here. Jump out of the project for the moment. Go to your project browser. We're going to have a look at restoring edits and shots from backups that we've deleted. Scroll down the bottom of the list here, things that have recently been deleted. This, the shot log that's recently been deleted, it's the last one in the list. Hit restore. The log is restored. And if we step back into the project, look what's happened. The log is restored and we're now able to reconfigure, which is great news. However, the media still, of course, remains offline because that's gone now forever. So there's a way out if you do delete the logs as well. Let's go to the clips and rendered filters. Select everything in the bin. Now if we right click and choose delete, so there is a specific difference between destroy this clip and delete. You want to see delete in your options. So now we've been asked do we want to delete the logs or well, we don't. Do we want to delete the media files to free up some disk space? Yes, we do. Hit delete. Everything can safely go offline. These files are in the bin now, offline, and we're able to reconfigure as we please. So I hope that's given you some guidance of the technical pitfalls when you're rendering. Don't forget to upgrade to Pro so you can enjoy the benefits of the render function and enhance your effects work. Thanks for watching.